Good morning, students. So today we are going to start the vision of the Langdos chapters. So first, we'll pick up the poetry. My mother has sixty-six. But my mother has. So my mother at sixty six. This poem is uh, autobiographical in nature. Why autobiographical? Because it's uh, uh, from the poet's own uh, life. It's her one of her own experiences. So though this poem is autobiographical, the poet the poet is talking about her own experience. but the way she has written it the in the end the poem attains universal appeal okay the poem contains poet's own experience the experience when she was separating from her own mother okay she was she had come to her mother's house for vacation and after at the end of the vacation she is leaving her mother's house and is going to and is going back to her in laws and this is the time when she is leaving her mother and uh, at this time of uh, separation from mother she becomes emotional and at this time when she looks at her mother she finds that her mother had become very old and uh, one never tells what would ha- what would happen to these old people though life is unpredictable you can you can never predict what would happen tomorrow but especially when uh, when the parents are very old at that time when one is leaving one's parents for for a little bit longer time then one becomes emotional that is but natural so this poem attains universal appeal because what the poet feels that is true with everybody everybody becomes emotional everybody has these kinds of you know Uh, fears or uh, you know emotions at the time of separation so here the word 66 this is also very important the, when mother is 66 when she is no longer young, younger when she had got uh, her face wrinkled pale face when she is not that beautiful when she is not that charming the way she was earlier so at that time how the how she looks like so in this poem the poet is uh, starting like uh, at that time the poet was leaving the her in uh, leaving her mother's place and was driving to cochin airport so this is very important like she was going to the cochin airport she was leaving her mother's home and was going to cochin airport uh, to take a flight to her own in laws but on the way from home to airport so home to airport this is the this is you know time at this time when she is you know leaving home to reach airport by car at this time uh, whatever is written in the poem you know that is being texted so when she was leaving home when she was she was driving the car and her mother was sitting beside her at that time on the way the poetess she happens to look at her mother at that time her mother was dozing off so her mother was dozing off with her mouth wide open so she was dozing off with her mouth wide open and it shows the awkwardness with which the mother was sleeping at the time she also observes that her mother had got a pale face pale face which was ashen like that ashen like pale face so when she was going from home to airport she was driving the car mother was sitting beside her 
then the poet looks at her mother and finds her dozing off with her mouth wide open so of course one doesn't look nice when one is sleeping like this and one more thing she observed that her mother had got a pale face which was like an ash her mother's ashen like pale face right so one so the pale face dozing off with mouth wide open that makes the poetess feel as if her mother had become very old and she, and uh, she might die very soon right she even compares the face of the mother at the time with the face of a dead body the corpse like that so she uses the word corpse in relation to the mother's face that her mother mother's face looked like the dead body because its face was pale so because of the pale face mother looked like a dead body and moreover she was dozing off anyways uh, they these thoughts when she had these kinds of feelings that her mother was dying was about to die very soon that very minute she wanted to dispel her thoughts she did not want to think about these kinds of things and she wanted to change her mind so she put her thoughts away that is very important in the line so then she put her thoughts away so what 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 does it what do you mean by put her thoughts away she wanted to dissipate her thoughts she want she started thinking about something else why why did she put her thoughts away because uh, it's a human nature that uh, one doesn't want to think about negativity for a long time especially one doesn't want to think about the death of one's near and dear one okay even one doesn't imagine one's near and one's death so she wanted to change her mind she wanted to change her thoughts so she looked out of the window what did she do to do this she looked out of the window which window window of the car so because she wanted to think about something else she did not want to think about her mother's death she looked out of the window and what did she see when she looked out of the window she saw two things number one she saw mary children spilling out of their homes so one she saw when she looked out of the window what did she see number one she saw mary children spilling out of their homes so mary children number one she saw happy children okay and then those children were spilling out spilling uh, spilling is you know uh, what spilling like when there is movement flow is there okay in the car what she was looking at in the car what she had already seen her old pale faced mother with mouth wide open dozing off number 1 see the pale face then you see sleeping with mouth wide open awkwardness sadness old age but outside the car she saw youth young children they also happy happy faces bubbling with joy and they were like flowing running spilling out of the out of their homes see this energy see the youth see the vigor see the happiness in contrast to what she had seen inside okay so what was inside the car and what she saw outside the car that they are total contrast it's you know way of life the things don't remain as it is once upon a time mother might also have been young beautiful energetic but today see what she has become but this is the circle of life if somebody has become old then the youth is still there so she saw the mary children spilling out of their homes and second thing she saw outside were trees sprinting past young trees sprinting past 
then outside she also saw the trees which were which seemed to be running fast her car was moving ahead but the trees which were outside they seemed to be running fast so uh, another image which is trees are green okay beautiful and sprinting again movement so children were spilling there was movement and children were sprinting past there is a movement and trees are also symbolic of greenery or life or vigor right and children are themselves symbolic of you know the, they symbolize youth energy and vigor so what are inside was that was in total contrast to what she found outside and moreover the of course the poet is giving presenting a contrast the poet is presenting contrasting images what are images the image here what kind of imagery we have got we have got a visual imagery what kind of visual imagery which what is visual imagery which we can see through our eyes we can imagine with our eyes okay when we read the line like the trees sprinting past or merry children spilling out of their homes i guess by default we get the image of the children coming out of their homes or we see we imagine the trees sprinting past in our eyes so these lines make the readers have a visual imagery okay so the visual imagery in these two lines and these two imageries are there in total contrast to what the poet had seen inside the car right so what what was the basically what is going on basically the poet is going to the cochin airport to catch uh, his uh, to take flight but on the way when she was driving she saw her mother having become very old and she could not tolerate her uh, she could not like bear the feeling the you can say very idea that her mother might one day die and in order to dispel her sad thoughts she looked out of the window and saw these good things positive things okay what were those positive things number one one was the one was about the merry children happy children and they were spilling out of their homes and the other were spilling others were trees which were sprinting past okay so she reached the airport at the airport what happened there was a security check and all so the point is like the way went off they reached the airport in the car the poet did not look at her mother again they reached the airport and after security check so after in the what happened first when she looked at her mother she was quite disappointed that her mother had become old and will die in order to dissipate her feelings she looked at looked outside and found children and trees and this way the time passed and finally when this uh, when they reached the airport the uh, poet the daughter did not look at her mother again and there they went in for the security check or formalities whatever one has to undergo at the airport and after all the formalities when the when the poetess was to leave her mother then finally the daughter or you can say poetess looked at her mother again she looked at her again looked at mother again so this again is very important why again very important because what happens the people whom we love you know we always look at them and keep on talking to them especially when we are leaving somebody uh when we are going somewhere then we look at our near and dear ones and we keep on talking to them but here the mother the daughter the poetess was making an effort not to look at her mother because if she would look at her mother she would be reminded of her mother's old age and old age is symbolic of death old age means that one is nearing death and that she did not want to even imagine but when you are leaving the when she was about to leave her mother because she had to finally take the flight then finally because she had to look at her mother she looked her, at her again so again is uh, symbolic of again signifies that she was making an effort to look at her mother so when she looked at her mother again 
then what did she see she saw that her mother had become so earlier her mother was like this and now when she looked at her mother again she found her mother having become wan pale like late winter's moon so finally when the poetess looked at her mother again before leaving her she found that her face had become wan pale like late winter's moon so what is a like late winter's moon of course it is a simile earlier also simile was when he, the poetess was saying ashen like that ashen like that was also simile here now she says like late winter's moon so what is winter's moon let us first understand it moon is basically symbolic of beauty and uh, you know brightness beauty brightness gleam right but in the winter what happens to the moon in the winters the moon becomes uh, uh, weak or you can say hazy because it gets hidden behind the fog because of the fog the winter the moon in the winter becomes a little hazy and bleak it doesn't shine that brightly the way it shines in spring season and moreover in late winter so in the late winter with the fog the moon becomes all the more dim so now the mother has become like late winter's moon why because now she has become old she has lost all her beauty her charm and her sheen so in her youth she might have been very beautiful she might have been very energetic she might have been very Uh, you know glossy shiny but now she has become like a late winter's moon which has become weak because of the fog around it okay so she finds her mother having become old again and that makes her remember very important point again so when she finds her mother having become very old and weak like late winter's moon she she says that uh, uh she feels that her she remembers her that reminds her of her old childhood fear so now when she finds her mother having become old she is reminded of her old childhood fear now the point is like what is childhood fear which she is reminded of again the childhood fear was that in her childhood the poet always used to feel that her mother would die one day children it is a universal fact like all children when uh, children are very possessive of their parents because they don't want to lose them they always have a lurking fear in their mind like maybe their parents would leave them so that childhood fear had today resurfaced so today this fear this childhood fear what kind of fear fear of losing mother the fear of losing mother has resurfaced got it so the fear that her mother might leave her the fear which she used to have in her childhood that fear has today come back again and this fear is not making her is not making her look at her mother comfortably that fear has overtaken her right but what happens the daughter the poet is very much you know uh, afraid that maybe she would never be able to see her mother again she is very much you know uh, emotionally disturbed but this emotional trauma doesn't make the poet become weak because she knows that she has to leave her mother and she would leave her mother with a smiling face this she knows because the uh, the wives which you leave behind they matter a lot so she wants to leave her mother with a smiling face so what she did so before leaving her mother what she did only was the only thing she did before leaving her mother was smile and smile and smile
so poet she was emotion emotionally disturbed she was afraid that maybe she would not be able to see her mother back again despite her this kind of emotional state she did not she did not become weak in front of her mother and bade her farewell bade her goodbye with a big and broad smile on her face and just said one thing and only she said and what she only said was see you soon amma so these were the parting words which the poet said to her mother she said so finally before leaving her mother she only smiled and smiled and smiled so smiled and smiled and smiled the purpose was she was hiding her pain behind her smile okay when you smile a lot when you try to hide your pain then you have to smile more than ever okay so she smiled a lot so that her mother was not able to see the pain which she had within her and she only said one thing okay see you soon amma see you again so with these positive note with this positive note she left her mother for her next journey okay so the poem is about like uh, how how we feel when we leave our near and dear ones especially the parents who have become old and by leaving them we become very disturbed emotionally but the fact is that life is uh, the another name of life is about moving ahead we cannot stop whatever may come so life is all about moving ahead so the poet also could not stop and being with mother forever she had to leave her but what she did she put up a brave front and left her mother with a smiling and positive words smiling face and positive words like see you soon amma right so this is what the lesson of life is like life is all about moving ahead in between uh, and the circle of life will go on like this one may come or one may go okay the people we come across in our life they may come or they may go but yes it is very important like we don't stop playing our parts playing our roles that efficiently which we should right so with this the poem has come to an end children to today you people can revise this poem your first test of uh, revision first test will be next tuesday you know and it will be of uh, 20 20 to 25 marks it will be all mcq based and uh, the first revision test will be of complete flamingo okay so start revising any doubt children you can ask if there is any doubt you can ask raise hand and tomorrow i'll pick up uh, the poem an elementary school classroom in a slum yes any doubt you can raise hand come on No doubt. 